Welcome to my YouTube channel, Rick Sorot's Watercolor. If after watching this video you have questions, one of the best sources of information is my website, rsorotsart.com. I'm frequently asked questions about my materials. One of the best sources for that information is the studio page of my website. I'm also often asked about classes and workshops, and you can go to the workshop page on my website and see what uh, workshops are scheduled and upcoming. And if you have specific questions, you can comment on the video or you can email me at contactrsurwitzart at gmail.com. Enjoy the video. Welcome to the narrated step-by-step -step tutorial for my painting Pumpkin Wagon. The photograph on the right was a reference from my painting. It's a picture I took at a nearby farm market. As I looked at the photograph and thought about my painting, there were two things that came to mind that I wanted to prioritize in my painting. The first thing that I wanted to prioritize was a strong light source. You can see in the photograph the sun is coming from the right and highlighting the right side of the pumpkins. I wanted to make sure that I picked that up in my composition. The second thing that I wanted to prioritize was to make sure that my colors came across as natural. It's very easy when painting all the orange in this pumpkin scene to have the colors look very fake and feel like a big orange popsicle and I didn't want that to happen in this composition. I decided that I was going to experiment with the colors I was planning on using before I began my actual painting so I taped a small piece of paper to a board with masking tape and then experimented with those colors by applying a big wash. The main orange that I decided to use is called Halloween Orange. It's made by American Journey. It's pigment PO62. You can also find PO62 as a Windsor Orange, Permanent Orange under Daniel Smith's colors, and Azo Orange for M. Graham. For the orange and yellow tones, I also used Gamboge, Quinacrid and Gold, Quinacrid and Coral, and Burnt Sienna. I used Cerulean Blue along with uh, some of the orange tones to mix some of my neutrals and to use uh, the blue itself as a, as a cool color in my composition. The stems of a pumpkin has a bit of a, an unusual dark green grayish tone to it. So to achieve that I decided that I would use Royal Blue, Sap Green, with some of the Halloween orange mixed in and uh, at times I'd mix in a little cerulean blue also. I drew a light sketch with a B pencil. I drew the major shapes and some of the details and part way through my painting process I'll use a kneaded rubber eraser, a soft rubber eraser to remove my lines. Uh, some of them won't come off but that doesn't bother me. I kind of like the feel it gives to the overall painting but if, if you don't like to have any pencil marks left, you might consider using some type of a water-soluble pencil that will dissolve um, and you won't have to worry about that. As I mentioned, one of my areas of focus was having that uh, strong light source. So I want to preserve the highlighted areas on the sides of the pumpkin and the stems. And to do that, I'm going to uh, mask the highlighted areas before I begin applying larger washes. There's a number of ways to uh, apply masking uh, in the painting process. I have a video where I cover a number of those. Uh, for this, I'm going to use a Fine Line Masking Fluid Pen. Uh, that's the brand name, Fine Line. And uh, it's very good at doing some detailed masking. It, it produces a very fine line of mask that'll dry and resist the watercolor as you paint. The one drawback is it does clog fairly easy. So you have to be careful when you're using this that you don't set it aside uh, for very long um, if you're not using it. So when, when you're not using it, just make sure you cap it and set it aside and then uncap it when you're ready to use it again. Because it is very, um, uh, has a very small applicator and it has a, a fine wire that goes down when you put the cap on and uh, it, it can clog pretty easily if you're not um, careful with it and if you don't keep it clean. Using this uh, fine liner pen I'm going to mask the highlighted areas on the stem and the highlighted areas on the pumpkin. 
using the masking fluid will allow me to come in with some larger brushes and apply some larger loose washes without having to worry about losing the highlights I want to preserve. This will allow me to have more of a painterly feel uh, rather than something that's kind of tight and, and feels like an illustration. Here I continue to apply the masking fluid. You can see where I've applied it on the left side and I'm continuing to work across my composition. This takes a little bit of patience up front, but to me it's uh, worth the result that you get in the end. And here you can see where I've applied the masking fluid and it's completely dry. The Fine Liner brand has a slight blue tint to it and you can see where you've applied it, especially once it's dry. Another brand I use doesn't have any tint to it and it's not as easy to see when it's dry. There's a variety of brands out there that use different colors um, in their mixtures. So now these areas that I've applied this, while they don't show it now, uh, once I've completed my painting and removed the, the masking fluid, they're going to reveal the whitest whites in my composition. And now I'm ready to begin painting. So I'm going to begin by uh, placing some burnt sienna in these recessed areas of the pumpkin. And I'm using a jumbo round small wash brush made by Silver Black Velvet, that's the brand. And here I'm going to apply some of the Halloween orange mixture that I have in between the, the marks that I made with the burnt sienna. And I want those uh, areas of burnt sienna to be a little darker, so I'm gonna come back with a little bit more um, burnt sienna, a little stronger mixture. And as I said, I'm working wet on dry, but from time to time I'm working wet on wet because after I applied uh, a wash, it's obviously a wet surf become a wet surface. So if I come back into an area such as there at the bottom of that area I painted, I'm working wet on wet, and I, if I have a bead of water there, I can continue that one wash down without anything setting an edge. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the cerulean blue, and I've got a smaller brush here. Um, it's still not a small brush, but it's smaller than the wash brush. And so I'm taking the cerulean blue and leading it up into the, through the orange and letting those two mingle on the paper a little bit. And that cerulean blue, working with the orange, helps create a bit of a neutral. And the cerulean blue uh, helps reinforce the, the feeling of a shadowed area because it's a, a cool tone. I'm continuing on taking the same approach. And uh, periodically, I'm going to try and charge that uh, that wash with a little variation of colors. So right here, I'm, I've put some gamboge into my mixture. So it has a bit more of a, uh, a yellow feel uh, and not as orange as the pure Halloween orange. And now you can see where I'm taking uh, it's actually a mixture with cerulean blue with a touch of Halloween orange in it. So I'm bringing it to my paper from my palette already a little bit as a neutral. And then I'm leading these washes of orange down into them. Keep in mind that I work at an angle about 15 to 20 degrees. So I, I let gravity help me. It's I, I know uh, which way my paint's going to flow because it's at an angle and uh, gravity is going to bring it down towards the bottom of my board um, but it's going to do it in a controlled fashion because I'm working wet on dry that it's only going to um, move around in the areas where I choose to wet the paper and put a wash and it's not going to run it's not going to go into the the white areas um, that I don't want to paint right now. It's going to keep me in control.
I've finished the first pumpkin for the most part and have completely dried my paper and now I'm going to begin working on another pumpkin here to the left and uh, I'm using a uh, pretty much a pure Halloween orange mixture there and now I'm going to apply some gamboge uh, above that and that's going to uh, flow down with gravity and uh, gra uh, gradate into the orange that I applied and give a nice transition and it's going to help give the feel that that area back there is being sunlit behind this uh, other pumpkin here that's more in the foreground. I'm applying some burnt sienna here to give the suggestion of those recessed areas along the pumpkin and I want that to, to feel like it's in shadowed on the underside of the pumpkin so I'm going to come back in with some cerulean blue to uh, give a nice uh, cool tone in that area and I'm pulling it up into the orange which is still wet and those two are going to mingle and cause a bit of a neutral right on, on where the two edges come together and at the bottom where I came up from the bottom up with the blue is going to retain a, a little bit of a stronger blue tone uh, because it's further away from that orange and is not getting neutralized as much as that that I drug up into the orange mixture. I moved on to another pumpkin and uh, there's quite a bit of repetition in this painting so in the interest of time I'm not going to show every pumpkin that I paint in the video but it's a similar uh, approach that I take across the whole composition. Here again I've got some Halloween orange, a little burnt sienna and um, I'm just working my way around this painting and you can see how my brush strokes are trying to, uh, I try to mimic the contour of the shape as I paint them. That uh, helps uh, further define that shape uh, by using the, the, the direction of my, my brush strokes. And here I, I soften some edges with a spray bottle and coming back in with my brush. Now I've got uh, here, this is actually quinacrid in gold. It's a, it's a very vibrant color and helps uh, enhance some of the, the color I feel of the orange. Here I moved on to another pumpkin and you can see now I'm taking my cerulean blue and leading it up into the orange. There's a larger sh shadowed area on this particular pumpkin. So I have the, the Halloween orange on there. I have the cerulean blue that I'm uh, applying and I have the uh, whitest white of the paper that's going to be preserved by the masking that I have on there. And you can see how I can make those marks to say the cerulean blue and leave the space in between uh, the, the, the plain paper then come back with a wash in between there and then it, it kind of mingles and becomes one because uh, I haven't let the edge set on, on it so it doesn't become hard edge and it just makes one large wash on that shape. Now here I'm doing some of these pumpkins that are more in the background. Um, and I'll be trying to play warm edges against cool edges to help differentiate the shapes. And at the same time, I'll try to contour with my brush strokes a little bit to help uh, with a sense of direction and help give volume to these pumpkins. In this area here, I have some of this orange, but I'm going to come in with a, 
some cerulean blue and start to uh, make that 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 area on the undersides of some of these pumpkins feel a little bit more in shadow so here I've got the cooler tone and so far all I've been painting on is pumpkins I haven't done any of the stems yet and most of this composition is pumpkins or stem and there's some gourds to the bottom lower left a little bit of a wagon but um, it's mostly just pumpkins and stems Here I'm working on another larger pan, uh, pumpkin and the colors in it are the Halloween orange with cerulean blue and uh, some quinacrid and gold but I want to have a stronger uh, redder tone on this particular pumpkin so I'm using a mixture of quinacrid and gold and quinacrid and coral to give me this stronger reddish orange tone and to the right is the quinacrid and gold without the quinacrid and coral in it uh, but it helps um, give some variation in some of the oranges that I'm using as I, as I was saying in the introduction I don't uh, don't want this to feel like one big orange popsicle type uh, color um, so there's a lot of variation going on with uh, the variety of the orange and the yellows and the and a little bit of red added in there the burnt sienna but also the uh, the effect that mixing in the cerulean blue has on these with uh, helping to create some neutral uh, neutral tones and what you have to keep in mind when you're working with watercolor is that uh, dark vibrant wash that you're applying isn't going to be as dark or as vibrant once it's dry you lose some of the value and you lose some of the color intensity when uh, the uh, painting is and the paper is completely dry. If you look at the photograph, you'll notice in the background there's a lot of pumpkins. This area where I took the photograph is this is full of pumpkins. This this is wagon is one of many, and uh, I don't want to render those background pumpkins so that they become an area of. Uh, of such an area of interest that they draw the viewer back there so much but I want them to kind of just disappear into the background and uh, so I'm going to kind of treat that whole area as one shape uh, to especially to start so I'm applying uh, a wash and just kind of in the shape of a pumpkin and soften it with the uh, spray and I'm going to put a little bit more here but for now what I'm going to do is have this just a large orange wash and as I move through my painting process I'll come back and give some indication uh, with some value changes that there's some shapes back here um, and just give a suggestion of distant pumpkins. I'm painting this lower left area here that's actually some gourds and I'm not painting them with a high level of detail I don't want that to be the draw for the viewer so uh, these are not going to have as strong a value as some of the pumpkins will eventually uh, they have the color the shape uh, and they're going to stay pretty much middle value a little bit of dark value but uh, I just want you to know that they're there and that they're gourds and that's that's about it I'm beginning to work on the stems now and as I mentioned earlier about wanting to keep the color so they're feeling natural I want that to be true with the stems uh, also and I feel the stems on pumpkins have a bit of an unusual green it's almost a gray green it's not bright really uh, it's kind of a, a green blue green in areas uh, with a gray tone to it so the mixture that I'm using is sap green with royal blue and uh, some Halloween orange mixed in and at times I mix in some cerulean blue but these are the colors that I'm using to give me the uh, the green tone that I feel is a good representation of uh, a natural uh, stem color on a pumpkin
Here I'm continuing with the stems. This again is another repetitive process just as the pumpkins were. So I'm not going to show every stem being painted. But you can see how uh, they're starting to stand out now that I've applied this kind of a dark valued green to it. And remember I have a masking fluid in some of those areas uh, of the stems that, that are going to give some very light highlights once I remove the masking fluid. You can see as I paint these that I'm not necessarily rendering from the photograph. I've got the larger shape drawn. I'm applying the value and um, some of the areas where I've applied masking fluid will have a little bit of uh, detail that, that it will add to the shape. But um, I'm still trying to keep a very painterly feel overall to this painting. And here I'm getting the last of the stems. Now later in my process, the, the area in the back that I treated as a large shape that's many pumpkins, I'll come in with some of this dark tone and just give just a slight suggestion of stems there in the background. Now I'm going to put a light wash over this wagon, this edge of the wagon. It's not going to be an area that's going to be much of a focal point, but I'm trying to get a value of uh, paint over most of this painting right now before I start to go in and, and work on uh, strengthening some of the areas and some of the shapes. So I'm, I'm just treating this with one large wash. It's the edge of the, the wagon and uh, I really don't have any intentions of going in and doing a whole lot of rendering on it. There'll be some more uh, smaller shapes that I'll work in with some different values, but uh, right now I just want to get the, the paper covered with a kind of a middle value here, light to, to middle value tones. And I'm going to get this uh, lower left corner here with a a light tone. This is a, a gourd that's in the painting and uh, I'm using a mixture that has some raw sienna and a little burnt sienna in it and just a touch of cerulean and it's just getting a, a light to middle value wash down in that area. Now I'm going to start bringing in some darker values and some more vibrant uh, color, some richer colors uh, to start to build some depth and give some dimension to this composition. The mixture that I'm using right now is a rich mixture of quinacridone and gold with some quinacridone and coral and some touches of burnt sienna. So you can see that it's a much richer color than what I've laid down, although just as the initial washes that I've put down, um, it's going to lose some of its uh, strength and lighten up as it dries, but it's still uh, stronger and a darker value than what I've been putting down. I'm going to take some burnt sienna here. So as I build these uh, darker values in and, and start to contour the shapes of the pumpkins and start to uh, strengthen the shadowed areas, I'm going to use a combination of uh, darker valued, both warm and cool colors because there's a lot of light bouncing around on these pumpkins. So even some areas that aren't in the direct light and somewhat shadowed, they, those areas can pick up some of the reflected light off of the other pumpkins. Here I'm applying some of the same uh, color mixtures and values on this other pumpkin. And uh, this particular pumpkin here has a uh, 
a darker valued tone to it than some of the other pumpkins. So I'm continuing using the same mixtures, the Halloween orange, the uh, quinacrid and gold, uh, quinacrid and coral, some cerulean blue uh, I mix in to neutralize some of those areas. And you can see now it's starting to get a little bit more um, a, f a better feeling for the shape of the pumpkin and the shadows. And here I'm putting some orange still, some of that Halloween orange. And I'm going to uh, come in with a much darker uh, valued mixture here towards the bottom. And uh, it's a mixture of burnt sienna, quinacrid, and coral with a little bit of quinacrid and gold in it. And uh, just a touch of royal blue. So right here, this mixture is a pretty dark mixture. And I'm going to gradate that up into the uh, other part of the wash that's still wet. So I have a uh, maintain a soft edge. Here work on another pumpkin to darken the values and I'm going to come in here with a, a mixture of uh, Halloween orange and cerulean blue so I'm mixing this on my palette uh, rather than let these two mingle on the paper in this uh, instance so um, you can see a little bit to the right of where I just applied has a stronger cerulean blue and this other mixture has a more uh, orange, but they're both a mixture of cerulean blue and Halloween orange. I've just varied the ratios of each color. And now uh, a stronger orange tone uh, I'm applying to this, this area of this pumpkin. You can see by mixing in cerulean blue, uh, more on the complement side of this orange, it, it brings some neutrals in there and makes these orange feel more natural, um, avoiding that kind of a, what I call the popsicle, big orange popsicle look. Now this area that I'm working in uh, is a recessed area of this pumpkin and I'm using a, a dark value here and um, I'm going to leave that area beside it uh, more of a, a lighter tone than what I've been doing and it's, so it's going to have greater contrast in that area. Here I'm putting a brighter orange wash over top of what I've already applied on this particular pumpkin. I've taken a richer tone of orange and put it on the pumpkin in the foreground and I'm carrying that tone into the pumpkin I'm working on now it's just to the right of the one I just did and I'm going to carry some of that over to the third pumpkin uh, kind of in the foreground that's to the right here I'm doing the third pumpkin and the particular photograph I'm looking at has a little bit of discoloration in uh, the, the surface of uh, this pumpkin and so I'm going to carry some of that into my painting just by putting some touches of cerulean blue uh, on the, the uh, edge on the side of this pumpkin. I've completely dried my painting and now I'm taking a rubber cement pickup eraser to remove the masking fluid that I applied at the beginning of the painting process. And as I do this you can start to see the highlights that are being revealed.
And here is my painting after I've completely removed all the masking fluid. I'm going to begin working in some of these uh, shadowed areas kind of underneath, between, uh, and behind these pumpkin shapes to start to build some depth, more depth in this painting with these dark values. So I'm using a mixture here that has some royal blue and some burnt sienna in it and a little bit of Halloween orange. But it's starting to help uh, strengthen the shadow, strengthen the contrast and start to further define these shapes. Doing similar brushwork with the same mixture in this area. I'm carrying that tone up a little bit in the recessed area of the pumpkin. And I'm using uh, some water here to help gradate that that value doing some more of this with the same mixture on the left side here and you can see how this is starting to um, get more depth into the painting and get some here You can see how in these instances where I'm applying some of this and I'm trying to feather it out a little bit, gradate it out, I'm letting my brush stroke follow the contour of what I'm painting in, in the many instances. And I'm working a little bit of that darker tone in this area where the squash are in the lower corner. However, I want to try and minimize some of that contrast because I don't want these to be the star of the show. I want to have the suggestion that they're there and you know they're there, but I don't want it to be the area that really draws you in. So I'm going to try to keep the contrast down a little bit in that area. Here I'm coming in with a grade mixture. Um, it's got some of the, the royal blue and some of the Halloween orange. And again, this is an area where I'm not going to do a lot of detail rendering. I'm just making some simple shapes and uh, some moderate value contrast changes to just suggest that this is a board and uh, sitting here on this wagon. But it's not, again, it's not the area that I really want to draw the viewer into. Now I'm using a darker value on the stems and this is a mixture that's royal blue, sap green, and Halloween orange, but it's uh, um, the, the biggest influence is coming from the royal blue. It's a very dark value mixture that I have here and I'm just putting some darker values in the uh, stem area to give it some more dimension, help strengthen the shadowed side and help develop stronger contrast uh, on the, the stems here throughout the composition. Here I'm working my way around the composition, putting some of this darker value on most of the uh, stems of the pumpkins. As I continue to paint these stems, when I'm done, the end result will have the, some of the whitest whites on these, it'll have some of the darkest darks, and then it'll have some middle values and you know, almost this kind of grayish green middle value tone that I used to start uh, the painting.
At this point, I've applied a little bit of this darker value to most of the stems. And one of the things that I want to deal with is this, uh, the distant background there. Uh, as I, I mentioned earlier, as I was painting this, I treated that as one large shape. And as I work through my painting process, I'm going to give a little bit of definition, but still not a lot of detail because it's not where I want the viewer to be drawn into. So I'm taking this color that I've been using on these stems, a little bit of this darker value tone, and I'm just making some small marks to indicate that there's some stems back here, and that helps further qualify that um, that's not an orange wall or anything. These are pumpkins back there. And those will face different directions, so I, I try to uh, vary the, the direction, the size, the length of the marks that I'm making. I need to do a bit more work here on these gourds. Um, they still need to come across as, as gourds even though I'm not doing a lot of detail and not uh, um, trying to showcase them. They, they need to be uh, recognizable as uh, the gourds that they are and, and they're not pumpkins. So I'm using some of this darker value mixture with the green, the sap green, the royal blue with some pyro or with some uh, Halloween orange mixed in to uh, paint this area. A few of these areas that I masked, I'm going to put a, a light wash of uh, um, quinacridone gold that's been thinned down a little bit to make it uh, a nice clean yellow. So some of these areas when I mask them, I don't always leave them as white. I come in and I put some glazes over them and uh, it works very well in this instance. I have the, the deeper tones that I've been putting down, but now I can come with this uh, kind of a nice warm yellow tone on some of these areas and it really picks up a glow uh, because I, I'm, it's got the nice reflection of the white of the paper coming through. I'm going to do a bit more work here in this uh, background shape to further suggest that these are pumpkins back there and not just uh, a big solid orange wall. So little by little I'll keep uh, making some brush marks here and I'll soften this up a little bit with a spray until I'm happy with what, I'm, what I've got back there and what I'm suggesting. I'm going to take the spray and I'm going to soften that up a little bit. Then I'm going to take a kneaded eraser. I'm going to remove the pencil marks that are there from my sketch. And as I had mentioned at the start, they're not all going to erase. Some are going to remain, especially in the areas I painted. But it doesn't bother me. It's part of the process, and I think it adds to the overall uh, feel of the piece. And if it does bother you, you can use water-soluble pencils that will dissolve, and you won't have to worry about any marks being left behind. This. Uh, uh, the edge of the card here, this board, has uh, some shadows being cast on it, so I want to pick that up um, a little bit. Um, I'm not going to make it too strong of a contrast here, but enough just to tell the viewer what's happening here. And following the contour a little bit, those shadows, it helps um, bring some more dimension to the, to the boards there, the, the part of the wagon. Here I'm taking uh, a, a light valued mixture of cerulean blue and I'm just touching some of these uh, highlighted areas to put some more in a shadow with a cool wash while others will uh, be left alone and they'll, uh, be, they'll remain the pure white of the paper. 
it just helps uh, give a nice color accent and helps uh, also give a uh, more of a feel that that's in the shadow. I'm still not satisfied with this um, background area here. So I'm coming in with uh, a mixture of quinacridone and gold and burnt sienna to give a little bit more definition to give a stronger suggestion of some of the shapes that might be back there. So a little by little I've built up some kind of pumpkin shapes with some orange and then I put the, the green tones on to suggest stems and now I'm taking this kind of middle valued warm uh, sienna color to suggest the curves of the pumpkins and the, the darker values that would be behind the pumpkins um, as, as you have overlap. So I haven't told the whole story. I haven't certainly haven't painted this with any level of detail, but it's just enough suggestion to give the indication that these pumpkins are continuing on back there and that there's more of them. I'm going to do some brush work to help further refine the overall painting and provide uh, uh, some crispness and, and make things a little sharper in areas. So here I've got a dark value. I'm using some linear brush work to further define that edge between these two shapes. And I'm going to take an orange tone here. I'm going to uh, break the surface of this pumpkin up a little bit. When you look at a pumpkin, it's not smooth like glass. It has some regularity and uh, some um, bumpy textures to it. So I'm just going to suggest that on some of the, these pumpkins. I'm not going to do it everywhere on every pumpkin, but just enough to give the suggestion that there's some irregularities happening on the surface of the pumpkin. I'm going to do the same thing on this pumpkin. Just taking that orange tone and, and breaking that surface up a little bit. There's a stem here that I didn't paint. I want to make sure I get that in here because that dark value of that stem in that location helps further define the edge of that particular pumpkin to the right. The area in the lower left here, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, a little bit more vibrant color here. I think it's a little flat when compared to the rest of the composition, so uh, I want to brighten that up a little bit. While I'm not still not rendering it, uh, I, I just wanted to put a little bit stronger color in here so that it uh, has a better balance with the rest of the painting. Right now, that bottom left corner doesn't have much in the way of vibrancy, and it's kind of inconsistent with what's going on in the rest of my composition. And that's my painting pumpkin wagon. I'm going to put a white mat on it so you can get a good look at it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out Rick Sorts Watercolor Friends and Subscribers on Facebook. And don't forget to like this, share it, and comment. Thanks for watching.